the laboratory version of the tragedy of the commons is an economic game called the public goods game. So it goes like this. Let's say you have four people come into the lab, and everybody gets $10, and everybody has a choice. You can keep your money, or you can put your money into a common pool. You put it into the common pool, the experimenters double it and divide it equally among everybody. Now, if you're selfish, if you're us-ish, or sorry, if you're me-ish, what you do is you keep your money. Why? Well, you get your 10 bucks plus your share of whatever went into the pool and, and, and got doubled. That's the way you maximize your personal take. If you're us-ish, if you want the group to do as well as possible, you put all of your money in. That's with double, that, you get the biggest gains, every, it, gets, it's, it gets doubled and everybody com, comes out ahead. So interesting question. When we face this kind of dilemma, is it a self, are we intuitively selfish where we're thinking, I want my money, and then we think, oh, no, 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 I should be nice, I should put it in. That's the more deliberative response. Or is it that we have a gut reaction that says, oh, I should be nice, but then you think, wait a second, I could really uh, get, get, uh, get, get, get the short end of the stick here. So what we did, we did a lot of different things. I'll tell you just one, one word version of this. We put people under time pressure. So we had people make this decision, but you have to decide in 10 seconds. It turns out putting people under time pressure makes them more cooperative. People put more money into the common pool when you ask them to decide quickly. And if you force them to decide more slowly, they put less money into the common pool. What this suggests is that, at least in some contexts, people actually have an intuitive response that says, OK, be nice. Now, you might say, oh, so we're hardwired to be good. Not true. At least, we, we, I, th I would say we, we, we are hardwired to have the capacity to be good in this way, but it varies a lot. People who report not trusting the people they interact with in their daily life, they don't show this fast, slow kind of effect. And as I'll explain in a moment, you see different patterns in different places around the world. So it's highly dependent on experience on, and on culture. But at least for some people, some of the time, you have a gut reaction that makes you more cooperative. But that's not the modern problem. The modern problem is us versus them. It's about cooperative groups with different values and different interests getting along with each other on those fertile new pastures. And this is where our intuitions do not necessarily serve us well. So let me tell you about a, a fascinating set of experiments done by Benedict Herman and colleagues. Um, so it took this public goods game that I described, the tragedy of the commons, and they had people in different cities around the world play this game. Now they did it a little differently. In the experiment that I described, they just did, played it once. In their version, they did it over and over again, the same people. And they also had the opportunity you could punish people for the, for the way they played in the last round. So if somebody is uncooperative, you can say, all right, I pay a dollar, and then as a result, you lose three dollars. Um, so this is a way of in, 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 in enforcing cooperation. Now, the beauty of this experiment is that Everybody in these cities around the world is in exactly the same situation. They test them very carefully to make sure everybody understands the rules, everybody understands exactly what's going to happen. And you get enormous differences in how people play and the amount of money that they walk away with. And that is all due to culture and individual experience. There are some places, like my hometown of Boston and in Copenhagen and St. Gallen, where cooperation starts out high, people put their money right in, and it, and it stays high. There are other places like Seoul North, uh, in, in South Korea, uh, where cooperation starts out kind of in the middle, and then people put in more, more money as people start to enforce it. You say, hey, you should, you should be doing this, and people do it. And cooperation ramps up, and by the end, it looks just like Copenhagen, uh, the capital of cooperation. Uh, and, uh, and then there are other places, like uh, Muscat and Athens, where cooperation starts out low, and it stays low. It never ramps up. And they were kind of amazed by this. Why is that the case? And they found this phenomenon that they didn't expect, which they call antisocial punishment. The people who didn't cooperate were punishing the cooperators for cooperating. What? Uh, I, I was ba baffled by this. So they interviewed people and they asked me, what's going on? And they said, you know, I don't like this whole game. I don't like this whole game. And I want everyone to know that I'm, just, I'm not going in for this and none of your, none, none of your, none of your do good or little cooperation things. If you look at uh, questions on the World Values Survey, questions about uh, uh, how, what is your attitude towards tax evasion or jumping the turnstiles at public transportation uh, stations, the places where people came away with a lot of money were the places where people had very negative attitudes towards those things. And places where people had more lax attitudes towards those things were places where, uh, or, 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 or pla places where you saw in the lab people playing this game uh, in, a, in a way where people didn't come out of it, where they suffered essentially the, the, the tragedy of the commons when it's people who don't know each other, who, who they don't see as part of their own personal social circle.